Hey everybody, John Peterson here, and today I want to show you a quick tip that I have for using the mask feature in Adobe Lightroom. Now, you guys probably all know that Lightroom really uh, pushed out some wonderful improvements to their masking features that makes selections of the sky, the background, the foreground, um, all those things so much easier. But there's a wonderful little tool that you may or may not have used in the mask feature that I wanted to show you. And this is a great way for me to select or deselect additional objects to add or remove to an existing mask. And the feature that I'm talking about is, is uh, called Objects. When you go into the mask menu, it, you should see an option that says Objects. And this is something that is an extremely powerful tool for refining the mask that you use in your photographs. So let's jump in and take a look and I'll show you how you can use this amazing new feature. All right, let's jump right in. This is a, a shot that I took just last week up in Central Oregon. And on this night, I was up at Sparks Lake and there was a lot of wildfire smoke in the area. And as you can see, I have this haze across the mountains that I don't really care for. I'm used to this scene um, being a lot clearer where I could see the South Sister and the rest of these mountains. So part of what I want to do in processing this image is reduce some of that haze. So let's jump in and I'll show you how you can use this object selection. So if I go over into the mask panel, I've already created a mask for the sky and adjusted the exposure just a little bit. But now the next thing that I want to work on is the mountains. So how do I select those mountains? If I select create a new mask, you know, I can do subject, sky, background, people. None of those are really going to work. I could use my brush and paint across the mountains as best as I can. Or there is this great new feature called objects. So when I select this, you can see that my cursor changes into a, a selecting circle and I can increase or decrease the size using the bracket keys on my keyboard. And all I want to do is paint over the top of these mountains. And I'm going to paint the forest as well. But I just want to paint over the top of these. Let go of my mouse button and look at that. The mountains are selected and everything else is taken care of wonderfully. So now if I want to go in and put some dehaze on this, clear that up a little bit. You know, and anytime you use the dehaze slider in smoky conditions like this, I find it adds a blue cast. And so I will add back a little bit of yellow to help nullify some of the blue cast that dehaze brought into it. And then maybe do a little bit of contrast, drop the black points a little bit. There, it's a lot clearer. I went from that to that. From that to that absolutely outstanding select objects there's there's a couple of other really cool ways to use this feature so let's say i want to darken the water down here just a little bit i want to bring the exposure down just a smidge but you can see these rocks are already dark enough and I, and i don't want them to get any darker so one of the ways i might darken that water is by selecting the linear gradient and I'll drag a gradient up from the bottom and I'll kind of get most of that water selected it's looking okay but notice the rocks are right in the middle of this mask what I can do then is I can remove the rocks from the mask if I go to the subtract button I'll do subtract subtract objects I'll paint over this rock. Look at that. That rock is no longer selected in this mask. 
And I can go ahead and drop the exposure. Maybe add a little blue into it, a little bit of magenta, just add a little bit of color. But you can see that I went from that to that and the exposure on those rocks did not change. Now, if I want to just isolate those rocks, I can again use the object brush, select these rocks, boom, look at that, they're selected. Now I maybe want to bring up the shadows a little bit, make them a little bit less overall black, and bam, there we go. Object selection, real easy, real simple. So if I wanted to take the same concept of you selecting objects, I can do this in multiple ways. So here's an example. Let's just say that I want to adjust both the, the small group of rocks in the foreground and the larger rock in the background. What I can do is go to my mask panel, go to select objects, and I'll adjust my brush just a little bit. And I will select this larger C stack behind me. You can see that it nicely selected. Now I want to go to add because I want to add to this mask. So let's go add objects and I will paint over these rocks here. Get this nice and selected. Look at that. Now I can adjust both of those rock groups together with one mask. But notice that sometimes the masking function, you might have to clean it up just a little bit. If you can look right in through here, more of the, more of the water was selected than what I would want. So what I can go in and do is refine this mask a little bit by using the brush tool. So if I go into subtract because I want to remove certain areas of this mask, I'll go subtract brush make sure my flow is up there um, I don't need a super high feather and then make sure that my brush size is small enough and I'll go in and I will paint out this mask right in here it shouldn't take long just paint out those parts of the water that I don't really want adjusted there lickety split now you know, I can go ahead and adjust these rocks together with one specific mask where I added two objects and I subtracted a little bit. And it's a super easy, intuitive masking tool where you don't need photo, you don't need to learn Photoshop mask, which can be tough. But this is a wonderfully powerful tool to have in your Lightroom repertoire. All right, there you go. Selecting objects in Lightroom masking module. Hopefully that was easy to understand and you can see how powerful and dynamic and flexible this tool can be for you in selecting certain parts of your image. Thanks for watching and hey, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so. Uh, keep watching, keep shooting, and always I enjoy comments down below if you have anything. And take care and have a wonderful day. All right. Bye-bye.